Good morning and welcome to our seed of encouragement. I got the word and the word said divinely override. You know, you cannot roll over and be playing dead with the devil. You have to roll up those sleeves and engage in a warfare with the devil. And I want to talk about the story in um, the Luke 22. Jesus told Peter, he said, the, the Satan has desired you. Satan has demanded you to have you that he may save you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. You know, in Job, we hear the story that the enemy was going to and fro when he come in front of God and he demand to visit Job. He requested. That means actually the adversary, the accuser, the devil is going around shining light on our shortcomings to God and telling God, I have a foothold on this one. I have a foothold on that one. But Jesus have have gone ahead, have seen ahead, and he has divinely overwrite the judgment of Satan. Hallelujah. He has divinely interceded for us. He's praying for us. So I, I don't know what have visited you. I don't know what is happening to you. I don't know what is happening in your circumstances, your finances, in your marriage, in your home, in your business, in your endeavor. And you are tired. Yes, the devil, you, you, are you are coming out of this and the devil is hitting you with another one. You're tired. Now you are playing dead with the devil. You can't be playing dead with the devil because that's what the devil wants. The devil wants to get into your mind. You know, whenever you're going through a storm, the devil never show you a picture that you're going to come out of it. The devil will always make you feel you'll be defeated because he said, as a man thinketh his heart, so is he. So the devil is never, never going to play you any picture showing you that you're going to come out on top of it. It's going to be pictures of defeat that the devil was going to play. And then, then you're rolling around because, you know, God, I don't know what to do. Kesera, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. That's the lie of the devil. That's what the devil wants you to do. But you're not going to give the devil your Bet right. No, you have to stand and engage in war. I like fighting Christians. I like the Christians that say, you know what, let's roll our street and get to fight. You know the one that say, hold on. No, no, no. You have to, to throw the first punch. You have to take your territory. You say, if you do not demand for it, you cannot get it. You have to demand, and the earth is going to give you that which is yours. You can't, you can't sit back there and be playing there with the, the enemy. No, you can't. You must stand and fight you even if you're four you pick back yourself let's put side to side peter simon peter and thomas simon peter was tempted just like thomas was tempted but what happened simon humbled himself that's what jesus was doing in the garden of gesmine man he knelt down he's humbled himself in the presence of his father and he's telling the father if by any way, can you take this cup away? But he said, never the, the, the less, let your will be done. That's what we are supposed to see in this passion because Jesus has seen of head. He has already prayed. The devil already know, God, Jesus already know that the devil is going to deal with Peter. Peter is busy around bragging, I cannot deny you, Jesus. I'm, I'm with you till you die, but Jesus has already seen. And Jesus looked at him in, in ignorance because we, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Our ignorance, that's what makes us perish. But if only his, our people can hope on themselves and come back to him and repent of their sin, he's going to deliver us. That's what the example that Jesus showcased to Peter. He told Peter, the enemy has demanded for you. He has desired you so he can save you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. And look at the prayer that Jesus prayed. Jesus didn't pray that the enemy cannot tempt Peter or the enemy cannot do whatever the enemy wants to do. He only prayed that his faith, though he's going to fall, but he can pick it back. Though his faith is going to, you know, to deem, but he's going to shine through because the prayer that Jesus prayed is like giving the sun a full eclipse so that you, it will eliminate the fate of God in your life. So you will know that God got you, that you will know the word of God that you have that will eliminate in your 
But the, in your mind, in your spirit, and you know that for sure you are the head and not the tail. You know that God said in Romans, I have given you the power on the authority to step up on snakes and scorpions and not teach you any, by any means, harm you. But the devil is not going to let you see that word. The devil wants you to see only the way you are under him. And God has given you the authority. Jesus made a public disgrace of the devil that hung him. He died on the cross. I say, cause is he that is hanging. He has striped off every power for the enemy and has given it to you. I want you to know you have the same power that resurrected Jesus from death. It's in you. All you need to do is to activate it. Activate it with the word of God. Activate it by meditating the word of God. Activate it by trusting in the word of God because by Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How are you going to build up your faith? How are you going to have a strong faith? Just say, if we have a faith as tiny as a grain of a mustard seed, we're going to tell this money to move from here to there. We're going to burn, declare, and it will be established. So uh, the devil have demanded us. The devil is demanding us every day. He's bringing to light to you your shortcomings. He's telling you that you don't want it. He's telling you that God cannot take care of you. He's telling you you have all this sin in your life that God cannot help you. But Jesus showed the example that he has prayed for you. He knows already. He said we don't have a high priest that is not compassionate of our afflictions. He's been here. He knows what we are going through. And he's in, in, in the right hand of his father praying for you, interceding for you. That God, his father, will have mercy. Don't you know that Jesus, that God will hear the prayer of his son, that he's praying every day towards you. He, he said in this world there will be trial and tribulation. That's why Jesus didn't say, take away this temptation. No, he said, he prayed that your faith will not fail. Because we are all going to go through the sift in this earth, in this life. Because if, if, if you're not saved, how are you going to know the wheat that is good and the one that is bad? So you're going to go through testing. You're going to go through diverse temptation. But he said, count it all joy because everyone is not only you. Everyone has something they are battling with. Everyone is going through something. And God has given you the power to overcome by the word of God. The word you speak. Peter said, be, be, be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary, the accuser of brethren, go around looking for who to devour like a roaring lion. He said, resist him and he will flee from you. The only way you can resist temptation is to, is to, to, to flee from it. It's for you to resist it. It's for you to flee. It's not for you to, to jump into it. Jesus is praying for you. Be comforted with that word. It, it so much comforts me that I have a father, a God that is praying for me, that is interceding for me, that is standing in, in, in place of judgment for me because, you know, the devil is breaking out my shortcomings to God all the time. But Jesus is there interceding in the, in the judgment seat for me. The devil desires you. To save you like wheat. But Jesus said, I have prayed, but I have prayed for you. That I have, I have divinely overrided the judgment of that Satan concerning that sickness, concerning that situation, concerning your marriage, concerning your child, concerning your finance, concerning your health. God, Jesus has overrided it. Hallelujah. It's a rejoicing time for you. So stop playing dead with the, the enemy. The, the enemy is not going to leave you if you cry and depress and don't eat and or do all that. No, he's not going to leave you. He's going to torment you the more. The only way you can defeat him is to resist him with the word of God and he's going to flee. When the devil begins to mess with your mind, tell the devil, get that behind me. Look at the man in the pool of Bethsaida. He's playing dead with the enemy. He's been rolling there for 38 years. And when Jesus came by, he was still telling Jesus reason why he cannot get into the world. 
Jesus said, man, roll off your sleeve and go home. Take your mat and go home. That means you have to engage in war. Paul said, there are two things that I want you to get in Philippians. He said, we do not wrestle against flesh or blood, but principalities and powers. So when they begin to see this war coming, when all this affliction begins to come, it's not your child, it's not your husband, it's not your mother-in-law, it's not your sister-in-law, it's not your co-worker, it's not your friend, it's the enemy. You are wrestling the prince of this earth, of high places. They are the people you are wrestling. That's the battle that you have between you. It's not flesh, it's not blood. That's why you cannot fight it physically. You have to fight it spiritually. You have to use the word of God to encounter whatever that is coming against you. That's the only way you can succeed. That's the only way you can persevere. That's the only way you can perceive and, and get it over and get it done with. He said the hip of the woman is going to bruise the head of the enemy. So there's an enmity between you and Satan. Satan just wants to gather you. Because when he sees you, he wants to gather you to his kingdom. But you need to fight. You need to fight on your faith. Because your faith is your confession. Whatever you say is what you get. What is coming out of your mouth? What, what do you have? What, what is in you when all this situation happens? You are not just you going from church and reading your Bible. You are what you are, what you become when things happen to you. That's what you are. When situation turn around, what is your confession? That's who you are. You have to stand firm and fight this battle. And we say, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliver you out of it. Jesus is interceding for you. Jesus has divinely override every judgment of the enemy. That's why he said, when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things have passed away and all things become new. Why are you allowing your past, past dictate who you are? Why are you allowing people's limited judgment to determine who you are? To, to, to make you feel you have a war. People that don't create you, people that don't form you, people that don't know you, don't know what God put in you. You let them decide your what. You give them so much power to decide your what, to decide the situation for you. When you tired of God, you can get up in midnight cry and call forth what you need to come to be and begin to decree. Job, the word of Job said, when we decree a thing, it will be established. What are you declaring to this month? September is here. What have you declared? Are you declaring that you're going to be standing on top of the of September? Are you declaring that whatever you put your hand on will prosper? That wherever you go, doors will open for you. That wherever you step, you'll be favored. You will be choose. You'll be the head, you'll be the tail. You will not lack any good thing. You will have you will be in good health. That you're going to sit at a banquet when Jesus is going to bless you in front of those that that, that have opposed you, in front of those that say you can't amount to anything, that is going to let his oil run over you, and they will see, they will celebrate God with you. They will say for sure the God is faithful over your life. Child of God, rise up. I know that Jesus has override the judgment. Jesus has override whatever the devil is planning. The devil, Jesus has already seen it ahead. He has prayed against it. So when he comes, he's not going to take you. You are going to come out of it testifying that God is good. Peter went, knelt, repented. What does Thomas do? Thomas put the rope and hang himself. You choose you which day. This day, who you will serve. As for me and I, my family, will serve the name of Jesus. You choose your life. Let's make this affirmation. Jesus is praying for me so I cannot be destroyed by the enemy. My faith will not fail. God has a purpose for my life and for my family. This trial will only showcase the glory of God in my life. God will bless me in front of people and places that broke me. This sifting will set me apart. This sifting process 
is going to set me apart and showcase the world how unique I am. I love you. Have a wonderful day.